The inspiration for starting Bioneers in 1990 was an emerging field of science that only got its name eight years later from Janine Benyus, Biomimicry, Innovation Inspired by Nature. Here's how Janine describes the quest of biomimicry. In 3.8 billion years, life has learned to do some amazing things, to fly, circumnavigate the globe, live at the top of mountains and the bottom of the ocean, lasso solar energy, light up the night, and make miracle materials like skin, horns, hair, and brains. In fact, organisms have done everything we humans want to do, but without guzzling fossil fuels, polluting the planet, or mortgaging their future. So yes, we're part of nature, but we're a very young species still trying to get it right. We're finally starting to get it right <laughs> by asking the disarmingly simple question, how would nature do it? We humans are engaged in a Herculean struggle. The UN report about to be released next month shows that the level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere has already exceeded levels not expected for another decade. Much of the damage we're causing to our Earth and most of the greatly accelerated global warming is a result of our poor use and understanding of energy. From nature's point of view, there is no energy shortage. There never has been and never will be. If we study and faithfully copy nature's strategies for energy use, we can avert the world's escalating energy crisis, a crisis that already exists for two-thirds of the world's people. Our mission at Pax Scientific is tr to dramatically reduce the use of energy in the industrial world by the application of biomimicry. Biomimicry, the new science that looks to nature for solutions to human problems. At PAX, we study natural flow and drag reduction. So let me share with you the awe-inspiring beauty of flow in nature. Our colleague and gifted artist, Michael Green, illustrated the illuminated Rumi and other books. His pictures paint a thousand words. Let's take a look. It's easy to think of nature's movements as chaotic, but there is a common shape underlying all of that chaos. The first peoples of the world all recognized how common spirals are in nature and believed that they were a reflection and a representation of the divine, the creation, fertility, and genius. In fact, the spiral is the most common shape and symbol for the great mystery of life across all ancient traditions. Now with the benefit of modern science, we can see that these spirals are everywhere from DNA. To particle decay in quantum mechanics. to the growth of every living thing. We used to think the stars were gods. We used to think the sun went around the earth. We used to think the world was flat. What other great truths are we missing? 
What can we see if we look with new eyes? From the atomic level to the very largest structures in our universe, movement wants to follow the same path as the whirlpool that you see when you pull the plug from your bath. It's the path of least resistance. Really, all the PAX principle is, is an understanding of a core geometry that nature uses instead of a straight line. So it's not a chaotic approach. It's not a haphazard approach. Nature looks haphazard. We go into the forest and we see leaves jumbled all around. And we see all these branches, higgledy-piggledy everywhere, and it looks chaotic. But if you look at how energy moves in nature, it's never chaotic. It's always exactly the same shape, and it's the same shape as when you pull the plug out of the bath and you get that whirlpool. That is the shape of movement in our universe. It's the path to entropy. It's how energy is moved. Every single living organism goes through liquid phase in its development. So it takes on the geometry of liquid movement, which is always this whirlpool shape. So our heart muscles are this shape. Our eyelashes grow this way. Our bones grow this way. And the cochlea of